Welcome back everyone. I have a short video for you today on a question that I get asked all the time. And it's a topic that I would love to hear feedback from all of you on. So many of you have asked me, with all of the kits on my website, what year or era do they fit in? And let me tell you, I grew up in the Midwest, and a lot of buildings, even my newest kit that I just put out, my two-year anniversary kit, those buildings are standing in the Midwest right now there are buildings built in the late 1800s early 1900s that are still there and now they're considered historical buildings and they cannot be tore down now what used to be a cigar shop uh, then churned pawn shop is now a cappuccino bar um, so you may have to change some signs or leave them. Um, I know of like general stores. There are still some general stores in the Midwest that have been in the same family for generations and their signs are still the same. I know of a men's, they sell men's suits and women's dresses and they alter them. They will shorten the arm, the sleeves, uh, they'll shorten the length of the pants, they'll shorten the dresses, uh, they, they make altercations, or they alter them. <laughs> so, uh, and that shop has been in the same family for generations, and nothing has changed. You walk into that shop, and it is the old metal panel um, ceilings, um, the same signs. Um, it's like stepping back in time. It really is incredible. But now it's protected. Um, they don't want it to be changed or tore down or anything. So it's not so much the question of what year. Um, the question you should probably be asking yourself is what area am I modeling and how can I make that fit? Now, every city or town has um, a historical district that has old buildings that can't be touched. So, um, you know, people will say to me, well, I modeled California and the buildings just don't fit. Well, there's areas in California like Santa Barbara a lot of old buildings uh, that the homes have been turned into a bed and breakfast. There's art galleries. Um, it has become a bit of a tourist area. Or people will say, well, I model Arizona, so it doesn't really fit. Well, there's some old towns 
in Arizona. For example, uh, Jerome, uh, it's been turned into an art district where it's all art studios, art galleries, gift shops, uh, but the buildings there are extremely old. So it may take some thinking outside the box and maybe creating a historical district somewhere on your layout that is just all old buildings that are clapboard siding, brick buildings. And you may have to change some of the signs. Now, my layout does not have a location. It's somewhere in the Midwest. And as far as the year, I don't have a set year. I have some vehicles on here that might be as new as 1957, 1958. Um, so maybe I could just be safe and say it's 1959 to make sure that everything fits. And I don't know enough history about engines and rolling stock to know what year um, stuff is from. Um, I really have always taken an uh, artistic uh, point of view when it comes to modeling. Basically, my layout is a giant canvas. I am making a very large oil painting. Uh, so it's more about composition, color, really. Uh, composition to me is very important and just constantly moving buildings around so that when it's photographed from all different angles, it looks good or pleasing to the eye. Uh, but I would love to hear from all of you and just love to hear your take on it. Um, the area that you're modeling, what year you're modeling. Now I have an N scale layout that is a very modern layout. Um, the equipment on there is CSX. Um, it, again, it's just a very modern layout, but we'll talk about that in a different video. Now I have some waterfront structures on my layout and all the time people will say, well, I don't have water on my layout. Well, uh, a little bit of thinking outside the box, you can put it on land and change it or have it be a, just a marine supply place that's on land where people can buy fishing equipment, um, stuff for their boats. So it doesn't even have to be by water. Or you can take um, a building like my limited edition kit, Soka's. Uh, let me show you that quick. Uh, but what I was gonna say is you could turn that into an antique store. It would make an incredible antique store. And to have the, the nautical themed stuff and you could get a lot of other detail parts from other companies to paint and put by it. And uh, it would just make for a great antique store. Let me show you that quick. So again, the next time you're looking at a kit from any company, think about how you can change it to make it fit your layout. And like I said, it would be a great idea to add a historical district to your layout. Uh, it would just give it such uh, a rich storytelling to it. You could add art galleries, uh, gift shops, um, a lot of different things. Uh, it just would be very neat to see on, on some layouts. So again, I would love to hear from all of you on 
um, your opinion on all of this. While I have all of you here, recently I watched a uh, YouTube video uh, from a YouTuber that is incredible. Uh, Boomer Dioramas, I'm sure most of you watch him. Uh, an incredible modeler. Incredible. But he had talked about setting goals and he had gotten some feedback from people saying, why would you set goals? It, it's a hobby. It's supposed to be fun. Um, but he had mentioned we set goals in life. Um, it's just, it's a great idea. You know, you set goals for a family vacation and then you work backwards from that and you plan when to take that vacation that works best for everyone. Um, you figure out how much money you have to set aside maybe out of each paycheck to take that vacation. So setting goals keeps you moving forward in life. Uh, and it's the same with your layout. Set goals. And like he said, you may not achieve those goals, but it gave you a plan. It gives you something that, that you can work on. So if you create a list um, this summer, probably anytime after April, I expect to have some visitors come and see the layout. So there's certain things that I want to get done. So I create a list and then I sort of work backwards from that list. Okay. What's most important or what needs to be done first before I can do the next thing. And you work on that list so that you don't walk into your layout room and just stare at it and start running some trains and switching cars and then pretty soon you're like, you know, I would really like to have some new tank cars. So then you jump on the internet and probably end up buying some tank cars that you may not really need. <laughs> so, and you go back maybe and run trains for a little bit, turn everything off, and leave your inspiration for going into your layout room to build is gone where if you have a list of goals and if you have that list say right next to the light switch on the wall to your layout room you come in and you see that list and it gives you a goal something to work towards and by creating those deadlines, you then can achieve some. And if you don't, that's okay. That's okay. You just say, well, we'll do that three months from now, or we'll do it next year. But I think setting goals is important to keep you moving forward in the hobby. So the next time you see a new kit being offered online, don't ask yourself, what year would this fit in? Ask, what area would this fit in? And how could I make this work on my layout? Maybe by just simply changing signs. All right, well, like I said, this is just a quick video. Um, like always, huge, huge thank you to all of these people. Incredible. All right, well, until next time. Stay motivated and happy modeling, everyone.